in Ontario, like Rowan's Law, to be done every year. So we need you guys to do that course. Each year you'll get a certificate for 2024. And if you could upload that to the CATT Dropbox. For CCES, same thing. That's a league rule that that has to be done every year by head coaches. And they've also added a second course. Um, I forget what the title of it is. Uh, athlete support so head coaches are doing both of those assistant coaches don't need to do either um vscs uh, there's been a lot of emails that have gone out about that if you did it last year you obviously don't need to do it this year they last for three years but you need to upload the vsc declaration for the two years in between and we've put that on the bottom of your coaches portal homepage. there's a document that you can fill out and upload Ari will be going through and confirming um, that you've done the VSC declaration and he will be pulling your VSC from last year and uploading it to your account this year. Uh, and like Brian said, like we're not asking you guys to do other courses or doing these courses again, safe sport, uh, anti-racism, any of those things. We're just asking you to go back in and find last year's screenshots and upload them to the portal this year so that next year all of these buckets will roll over last year everything was put into a miscellaneous bucket instead of these individual ones so the more uploads you can do for us the better if you're having a hard time finding it um, there's actually instructions again on the bottom of your coaches portal homepage that tells you how to find all those screenshots from last year uh contract work day the the contract document is actually also on the bottom of your homepage, so you guys can fill that out assuming um Head coaches, I guess that would be a little bit of a different process. You'd probably go through Brian slash Lauren slash Chris on what those contracts look like, but your assistant coaches can also fill those out, assuming they've talked to you about what the dollar value is. And then Jackson, who I don't think is on this call, is the one that's actually taking that information once Lauren looks at it and putting you into workday. So three of those check marks are kind of all tied together. Um and again, this is all like a manual process of actual humans reading all of this stuff. Um, I don't know that this got actually put out into any of the emails, but when you log on again to your homepage, there's three or four X's on the left-hand side. That's your personal info, education, and consent. That's the same as the athletes. That has to be done every year in case your contact info has changed or your address. Um, and you're basically just clicking, yes, I agree, in the education side to say that you'll either do the course or upload the course. So if you can go through and work your way through those three sections, that'll give you green checks as well. And then that gets us green check marks across the board for coaches. Um, One more. Oh, two more things. So for, on the athlete side, um, we've like we're on this daily checking documents we're checking academic and registrar and quest and med forms um but again manual process because people have to actually put eyes on these things uh, i had someone email me today and say i have all these red check marks or red x's what's going on and i looked and they literally just created the account 15 minutes ago so i was like calm down like i got we have to read all this stuff so if you can let your athletes know or remind them that there's actual humans involved in this process um but one of the things we're we're seeing um, people are uploading the wrong certificate to the wrong Dropbox. So we're not just ignoring that. We're actually emailing the athletes through Univeris, uh, but we haven't been able to change the subject line of that email. All it says is comment added. So I'm trying to catch athletes that can spread messages to your team saying, check your UW email for an email that says comment added. And that's coming from one of us saying, you've uploaded safe sport to the CATT Dropbox, please fix it. Um, so if you could have your athletes keep an eye on their UW email address for a subject line that says comment added, that would be helpful for us. There isn't a way for us to change that subject line, unfortunately. And then Brian, do you want me to get to the tryouts or is that going to be another, let me do that later. Uh, I was going to just comment briefly, but maybe just do it now. Okay. Um, just an overview. So this year we've been able to do tryouts through Univeris. Um, so they go through the same portal that your regular student athletes are on. They just have to click on the drop down menu when they select their sport. They actually select tryout athlete, and those athletes are doing just the med form and the waiver, as opposed to what we did last year where they were filling out a PDF med form and a PDF waiver and sending it to an email address that looked fake. This is doing everything on Univeris. 
but we still have to, it's a two-step process for the med form because they have to create a JNAP account and tell me about it so I can send them the intake form. So there's a bit of a lag in them getting um, set up that way. So we're asking for everybody to give us like, I think we settled on 48 hours, two business days to actually like before your tryout date to make sure everybody has that stuff done. There's been a few athletes that I'm getting emails from today saying I was told to set up an account for my Jane app and they've not set up anything on Univeris. So they need to be doing both of those at the same time. I can't just have athletes creating Jane app accounts and filling out med forms and they haven't registered as a tryout athlete. So if you guys can make sure that they are going on to Univeris, same link that your student athletes that are on your roster have been given, um, but make sure they're picking the tryout option on Univeris and not just filling out the med form because the waiver is included on Univeris and it's automatic now. So there's not going to be any more confusion about someone not initialing a box properly or missing a check mark or something. So it's a lot easier on our end. Uh, I think that's all. Lauren, was there anything that I think we caught everything? You got one? Yeah, I think you got all the main points. I would just add that if anyone's having login issues, I know there's multiple accounts with Learn and Univeris, or if you have trouble tracking down your previous trainings, just feel free to shoot me an email and I can help troubleshoot that stuff. Thanks, Lauren and Laura. When I'll just make a couple of comments and then if there's questions, jump in. So um, just for the VSC, just for your awareness, we were battling internally with that. The expectation about a year ago was that because all of basically everyone on this call was getting a contract new every year, you were signing the coach, you were Carla coaching our golf team. And the next year you do a new contract is the new contract required a VSC. So we, we kind of pushed and battled that to go to the model that many of you may be familiar with, with club sports and volunteering, where you can go every third year, you have to do an actual VSC, but in the, in the meantime, you can do the declaration. So that's what, um, that's where we led to this declaration in between. So it's a positive thing than all of us needing to go back annually to get the, um, a VSC done. The contracts, is also a better process because some of you, um, we get busy in our seasons and we forget to submit them or maybe we don't send the reminder or whatever's happened and we've had some people miss getting paid. I know you don't get paid very much, but it's still even that little bit that is there. So by having this in Univeris, it kind of forces all of us to get those done, get the assistant ones done so that you will get paid on time and it gets verified and everything. So these are, to me, real positive wins that have come out of um, Univeris. Okay. We, I know we said a lot there. Obviously, if you have questions that are super detailed, it might be better just to take offline, but are there any general um, questions that you think would be good for the group right now on registration? Um, this is Tanya I, with growing. I have questions. Um, on the tryout process, um, how do we know when we're checking to see if they've gotten through the tryout process properly, do they show up on our team roster as tryout or are they just generally tryout? And then how do we know who we can allow to do the tryout? Yep. So we have a separate spreadsheet on the medical side because we have to actually read everybody's med forms. Um, so I've been tracking every tryout athlete and then prior to your actual tryout, and I don't believe yours is starting till September I forget what we said, ninth, 10th, something like that. Yes. Um, I'll give you an update. What Beginning of that week, middle of that week, I'm trying to avoid daily updates just because <laughs> that's a lot of stuff. Um, but yes, we're tracking them on our end so we can see it. But um, yeah, you guys won't be able to see that on your roster because they're not signing up as a rower. They're signing up as a tryout athlete. That is, uh, Tanya, that is a um, one that we've talked about that we'd like to get improved moving forward with Univeris so that our coaches can see it. But at this point, our big push for this year was to get our coach and athlete portal in place. That seems to be working. So then that'll be our big, one of our things we're going to push for to improve the process is the, our approach to try out athletes. So it's, it's a, that's, that's an area that we're not loving right now, but that's how it will work as, the, as Laura outlined. Other questions on 
Univers registration. Okay, it's Tanya again. I have another one. Um, I am reading the emails, I promise. Um, on the uh, VSC um, check, um, what's the status of letters or how do we do that again if a coach needs a letter? So the 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 letter to give to like the police services to say what you need it for? Is that what yeah. you mean? Yes. Um, I th Is that letter on Univeris? I actually, no one's asked me that. Yes. Yet, so I don't remember. Yep, there's a copy. Um, once a coach has logged into the portal at the bottom, there's like a document section and it's it's um attached in there. So you can just download it directly. So if, if and if anyone, yeah, just look on that when you're on the coach's portal. If you happen to not find it, um, I think we all probably have a copy somewhere, but it's in at the at the bottom middle, I think, Lauren. Is that right? Now that you say that? Yeah, that sounds right. Okay. Yeah. Any other okay. questions? I do one more. Sorry, that's it. I only have three. This will be my third. Um, room bookings. Um, we filled out those sheets um in May, and I'm still not sure what's booked and what's not booked. And we've had changes because um athletic therapy needed a bit of time. How do we know about our room bookings, like for our information sessions or tryouts? Um, I mean, other people need fields and things. Rowing just needs a couple of meetings. How do we know when that's done, or who would we email to ask about that? Go ahead, Tan, Chris. Yeah, Tan, you can connect with me and then we can just go through your schedule that we sent you and confirm it. Okay, thanks. Yep. Okay, anyone else? Uh, I just have one, one quick question. Um, uh, for the CCES um, upload, I think there's two courses. Um, do we just send a screenshot of both the certificates or uh, what? Um, how do we, is that, is that how you guys want it to be uploaded? Yep. There's a different heading for either certificate. So yeah, you can just um, pop the certificate right in each, each heading there. There's a CCC or sorry, CCES and then the CCES athlete support personnel. I think there's two headings there. I'm looking at the drop down. I only see one of them. Um, I think Andrew, cause, Andrew, cause you're on the assistant coach roster side. Oh, okay. I think that's probably why. Um, so yeah, you're, I think you're, have you done both? That's great. But I think because we only really have one coach per team as the head coach. And I think Matt is still on the head coach side. So we can adjust that. That's fine. Yes. And then you'll be able to see a few more things on the head coach side. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Anyone else on universe? <laughs> Yeah, okay, Chris, we'll pass it over to you. Again, not no rushing, but quick as you comfortably can deliver your message. <laughs> Sounds good. I can be quick. It really was just um, to see if anyone had questions on the Varsity Giving Challenge email that uh, came through Brian maybe a week ago. I'll just summarize it real quick. But uh, Varsity Giving Challenge is, again, is happening again this year, September 23rd to the 30th. Uh, it's the fourth year, so I think most of you know what that is, but ultimately it's the opportunity to for uh, alumni, community, friends, parents to compete to help teams win extra prizes based on number of donors. Um, so go back to that email if you uh, need any more uh, details, but ultimately everything starts this Monday. So a week from today, what's that, the 26th? There'll be an email that goes out to all athletics related uh alumni and donors over the last 10 years saying um that it's starting um so on august 26 so we added a special thing this year an additional thing not only are you competing for one-time donors but we also are giving people the opportunity to be a monthly become a monthly donor to your team so we're just testing that to see what happens see how many people sign up and how it goes so there will be a a, a prize kind of competition for the teams for monthly donors as well as one-time donors which was the more traditional thing that we did the last three years. The, the unique piece is starting Monday with the save the date email that goes out. That is also when the monthly giving competition begins. So we're giving people a month in the monthly giving competition and a week, September 23rd to the 30th for the one-time donor piece. Um, the email talks a little bit about why, but really the why is because it takes 
there's more effort and it takes more time for someone to sign to, to decide to become a monthly donor. So we want to give those people a longer time than just that week. So anyways, that that's just a quick summary of the email. Everything kind of starts on August 26th, so next Monday. But the big push becomes September 23rd to the 30th. Um, anything you can do in your newsletters, um, let me know, you know, before you have a newsletter going out and we can get you some language to put in the newsletters to promote. Um, anything you can do on social as well will help your team um, spread the message and, and get more people supporting your team. Um, I'm not sure if there's any que any questions on varsity giving this year. Awesome. Well, if you do have any, you know how to reach me. Um, last thing was just uh, the advancement coordinator role. So Siri Kanket, um, most of you have worked with her. Obviously, she's on maternity leave right now. I had twins uh, maybe a month ago. So really great. I'm in the process of trying to fill the role. We do have an offer out and hopefully someone will start, let's say, maybe the Tuesday, September 3rd um, after Labor Day. So in the in the meantime, it's just me. So let me know if you have any questions. I am checking. I'm not checking Siri's email, but there is a bounce back. So if you're sending her emails, um, direct them to me. Um, and then as soon as this the new person gets going, then we'll be able to get back to our same level of kind of communication and support uh, throughout the season as we have previously. I think that's it, Brian. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate it. And as again, as I said right off the hop, we're going to try to go relatively quick and then questions for sure if you have them. If not, they can easily follow up with the appropriate person. Uh, over to you, Marshall. Never sounded better, Marsh. Your mic's not working. And you don't look muted. Just run over to Chris's computer, steal his headset. <laughs> Push over, Gilbert. <laughs> this is planned just for kind of mild entertainment in the middle of our meeting. Keep us all focused. Okay, coming in hot. Here we go. Is that better? All right. <laughs> It's here, there, and everywhere. Um, I think as many of you are aware that one of the courses that's required for all of our student athletes is the male allies or warrior strong, male allies for the men, warrior strong for the women. Uh, all of your upper year players should have taken that course by now. And what we do is we try to have all the freshmen coming in to take the course um, in their first year so that we get everybody covered off. I will be sending through some dates for the first sessions, I know that not all teams are chosen early, so we do have later dates that will be coming up. But if anybody that thinks that they're going to have their teams chosen uh, before the end of next week, so before the Labor Day weekend, and there's some times that might work on either the 28th or the 2nd or 3rd, please send them through to me so that I can arrange those times for everybody so it doesn't interfere with any potential training times. Uh, so look for my email coming through. Once you see my email coming through about the dates, the times, please ask your freshman student athletes or any new to you student athlete, i.e. someone that's uh, a walk-on first time they're playing for you this year, but they're a second year student, then they should be coming as well. Any questions? Hearing none, just uh, please keep an uh, eye out for that email from me coming to your regular coach's box and uh, encourage all your student athletes to attend the course. They'll be electronically signing in for attendance through Universe, and then we'll be tracking everybody. And hopefully I don't have to spend all of November, December, January, chasing everybody down thanks Brian. Hey, thanks marsh really good courses before we set up the original male allies Rolly and i had attended a workshop on campus and it's 
Um, they're both really good with opening some discussions on some challenging areas based around um, sexuality and different topics. And it's just, it's, we, we felt as a department, it's really healthy for our, um, for our, all of our athletes to be involved and for someone else to facilitate those discussions. So that's why we've um, mandated that for everyone to do and Marshall's uh, oversees the programming. Uh, I'm going to pass it over to you, Melissa, um, just to give a quick hi. And we know at some point in this year, we'll probably have a presentation from you, but a, a quick intro and for those that haven't met you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Uh, so hi, everyone. My name is Melissa Zettel. I am uh, the embedded counselor within athletics and recreation. Um, I've been with Campus Wellness for six years. Um, so just wanted to um, just kind of join the meeting, introduce myself so you have sort of a face to the name. Um, I can basically in my role, I can do one to one counseling with varsity athletes, as well as um, students who work within the athletics and recreation department. If you do have any referrals, you can connect them with Marshall, who then uh, will send an email to our intake team. Our intake team then reaches out to the student and then the student gets booked into my to my schedule. Um, one of the really great things about my role is we don't have a wait list. So um, in the past, sometimes students would have to wait to get counseling. Within this role in particular, um, we're really trying to make sure we don't have a wait list so athletes can be seen right away. Um, so that's you know, a really positive thing about um, the work that we're doing. Um, all sessions are confidential, they're free, um, so students don't have to pay for them. Um, I won't share any information with coaches on what we discuss in sessions, unless, of course, a student wants me to. So perhaps we're talking about something and, and you know, this, the athlete and myself feel it might be helpful to bring the coach in. With the student's permission, I am able to sort of facilitate that. If you were to connect with me and just kind of ask about what was happening within a session, I would have to connect with the athlete first um, before I'm able to share that with um, the coach. So that's just another piece around. Um, confidentiality. Um, some sort of issues that I've seen so far with athletes have included um, performance anxiety, general anxiety, academic stress, addiction, self-esteem, fitting in, body image, uh, receiving feedback, decision making around their sport, um, imposter syndrome, grief and loss around injury, uh, struggle with identity, struggling with opening up and being vulnerable, uh, belonging, family stress, perfectionism. So those are some of the, the issues that I've seen so far. Um, and a few more other things. Students can see me as many times as they need to. So if they want to see me once, awesome. If for whatever reason we're kind of thinking it might be beneficial for me to see them a little bit longer, I can do that. Uh, my approach is pretty laid back and conversational. Um, the modalities that I, I definitely lean on the most would be acceptance and commitment therapy, um, cognitive behavioral therapy, and I do a lot of self-compassion work. Um, and then a few other things. If you are working with a student and you're concerned about maybe you're seeing some mental health related issues, you're not sure how to navigate it, send me an email. Very happy um, to have a consult with you and, and help you sort of come up with a plan um, or give you some coaching and guidance around that. And then the other thing I want to share as well um, is if throughout your season, maybe you're noticing different you know, a theme or an issue sort of coming up and you're like, hey, maybe it would be great for Melissa to come in and chat with the athletes about this specific topic. Maybe it's a workshop, maybe it's more of like a processing group. Um, let me know. And that's something that we can definitely talk about um, myself coming in to support that. Um, and then lastly, my office is in the SLC 2216. So that's where I live four days a week. I work from home one day a week. So I am full time four days a week here um, in the SLC and one day a week from home. Does anyone have any questions? And if you do, you're welcome to email me. So always happy to answer any questions. Thanks, Melissa. So um, we are 
obviously all, you know, as coaches with focus on our sport, but behind the scenes, we're trying to provide as many supports for our athletes as possible. So having Melissa become in, basically embedded within our department, but part of the campus um, counseling services is awesome. Um, you know, we look at Marshall's role, which Marsh, I don't know how many years it's been, but probably within five, I would say that your role has been here, our student athlete wellness coordinator, you think of our tutoring program. So um, we know you're focused on your your sports and performances, and we're trying really hard behind the scenes to look at supports that can assist you and what you're doing in our athletes and provide those across all of our teams. So um, Melissa is, is awesome that we have uh, her as a new support or I'd say a new, yeah, truly a new support within our department on how um, available she is. Okay, Hoffer's been here a long time, so he's not a new support, but over to SNC. Thanks, Brian. So the couple, three big updates from our lens. So again, talking about the growth and um, evolution of supports for our athletes. Um, as of May uh, of this year, Andrew Graham is now full-time um, as part of our strength conditioning team, as part of our uh, coaching team, um, which is really allowing us to kind of expand um, kind of our, our quote unquote high performance services to, to more teams this coming year. Um, so big, big thanks to the leadership group for making this happen. Um, and we're excited for what's gonna be coming down the pipeline. Uh, the second big announcement is, um, and I think we, we might have alluded to it at the coaches meeting in May, um, we, we've um, kind of built a relationship with the faculty of health um, and we've identified some space that we're, we're starting to utilize in the evening hours. Um, over the past four months, we've slowly started to roll that space out um, and introduce teams to that space to start to use in a, in a team training setting to expand um, how we can offer strength conditioning services during the evening hours. Um, it's been uh, fantastic over the past um, three months as, we, as we've slowly rolled it out um, and we're really looking to launch it uh, to, to more people come September. Um, for those that have not uh, seen an email from me yet on this, you'll get an email over the next few weeks um, with uh, instructions on how to identify what your training times may be. Re reality is we're not gonna be able to accommodate everybody with this. There's still a lot of teams and we're still um, looking to optimize that space. We're gonna find out what the needs are for the teams, and we're going to find a way to, to equitably um, deliver it to, to teams that perhaps haven't got any strength conditioning in-person services before. Um, so look for that email coming up. Uh, the third in, uh, update from us is on uh, a supplement relationship. Um, so the BioSteel relationship um, is, is no longer. Um, they were sold about a year, year and a half ago, and they, they changed some of their testing regulations uh, regarding their product. Um, since then, we've been uh, contacted by the people that originally formulated BioSteel. It's called Quench Hydration. Um, so Quench does hydration um, products like the BioSteel high, uh, high performance sport drink they used to do. And they're going to be providing supplements as well that uh, are NSF certified. Um, NSF certification is kind of the certification um, that all major league NCAA um, youth sport um, teams need to see on their supplements to have some trust again it's it's not perfect but a, our pro sports um, those are the ones that they adhere to so if we're going to be um, offering anything then we need to make sure it has that uh, that label on it um, so the protein isn't going to be available until mid-september um, once it does come out what i'm going to do is send out an order uh, instruction form to everyone essentially like last time they would um, send orders through me I'll put them through Lauren and then make sure everything gets billed to the right uh, work order. Um, pretty sure that's it from my end for now. There'll be a few emails that come out in the next couple of weeks. Um, so if they're uh, relevant to you, then then uh, definitely reach out to me. And if there's any other questions, feel free to send me a note. Anything for Hopper? Okay, great. And, and, as we've said over our meetings for the last few years, our, our goal is to grow our ability to support as many, all of our athletes through s &C, and it, it is going to be timely. It's a, we're massive. We're call it 650, 700 athletes, 36 teams. We're, we're big. So, but we are growing and our support is growing with it. So we're up to two full-time people now and um, we're getting the student supports growing, facility spaces accessing. So we're not there yet, but just knowing where, where that's where our goal is. 
uh, student manager. So um, there, there are still some student managers. So these are mainly sport business students that have interest in becoming student managers that don't have a spot yet. We have done it where we've put it in the hands of the coaches that if you want a manager to let Marshall know, you would, would have received some messages on that. Um, if anyone hasn't taken um, Marshall up on that, there are some student managers available and reach out. We've received tons of positive feedback from coaches, student managers, and athletes last year. I'm, I'm sure there's some situations that weren't perfect, but the large majority of feedback we received was really well. So um, if, if you don't have a manager and you haven't talked to Marshall yet and you're interested, then reach out to him. Just search that in your, in your inbox and you'll see probably an email from myself on student managers. Okay, Marsh, good. Uh, just going to go through a few things pretty quickly here. A couple things that I've sent messages on recently. So music, um, just a reminder on monitoring the music that our athletes listen to. I'd say definitely in, in the public. So whether that's walking through our hallways, out on fields and spaces where someone could walk into. Um, but I'd also say in our in your locker rooms because maybe there's some music that's being played that you have some athletes on your team that aren't comfortable with. So we, we would encourage you, this is a great opportunity for discussion with your student leaders to have within the team and responsibility and community members, et cetera. Um, but let's make sure that at a minimum in the public setting that we're not having uh, inappropriate language and, and topics blasting through from our music, from our athletes. Uh, parking. So a message went out the other day with parking. So that's been a, a, a discussion that's gone on for a few years now. That's we think is landed positive. That price of $60 per month is, uh, is basically the rate that any full-time employee pays per month. Just so you're aware, like we don't, like I don't have free parking. It comes monthly off our paycheck if I choose to get a pass and similar. So this allows you to pick your months or, or your, your staff um, and the price is is pretty similar to what we're paying a month. Um, we think the process is really positive, but if there's questions on it, um, feel free. Anyone can go ahead and ask now. Lauren, did you want to comment? Because you've been the one collecting anything good or any comments on the parking process? Um, no, it's been going well. Yeah, if anybody wants to pre-purchase from their budget um, passes for head coach, assistant coach, just send me names, the months you want to purchase. Um, and then we also need license plate number and vehicle make and model. Um, but yeah, I'm collecting those requests and then they're going over to Ari to work with parking services to get those all sorted out. Okay, great. Uh, initiation rookies. So I haven't sent anything out on that. Rolly and I had the discussion the other day, um, just more probably similar to the music, like just being mindful that, um, the world has changed. So what might have been done to you or what you might have seen done when you were an athlete back in the day does not mean that that's okay today. And, I'm probably sharing things that all of you know. And I would say that even things that might have been deemed acceptable and appropriate even five years ago are are different today. So just be aware of, um, like I would say, have the discussions with your teams, have discussion with your leadership groups, um, make sure that they're managing good decisions. And I'd say even if it's some some things they have to do within your team for being a first-year athlete, just, just be mindful of it even more so than in the past. It doesn't just have to be the the bad stuff that goes away. There's probably going to be some things that create some inappropriate um, feelings or um, that that could be avoided with some discussion with our leader. So I think we'll leave that it there. And who knows, maybe that's something that Melissa down the road might be able to help us talk through as a group on leading some of those conversations. Um, cutting returning athletes or committed recruits. So if you are planning to not take someone on your team who was on your team last year um, or someone who you, you know, recruited to come here and then for whatever reason you've chosen, you don't want them on the team. For 
for now, just reach out and talk to me on that, please, first, just so we could talk through the process. Um, more and more, Roly and I are managing that situation. And it's athletes that were on the team last year that have been released or athletes who have been recruited and are going to make the team. And we have some real, I, I think some really good advice and hints for record keeping and note taking and documenting and communication, um, which we have a couple coaches that have, we've talked through in previous years that have done that and it's worked out better and just, I think I sent out an order about this last year, but if you think there's going to be a, a release that's going to lead to challenging uh, and, and challenges and emotion, again, usually it's someone who was on the team last year, maybe unexpectedly is getting caught, um, then just let, let's have the conversation first. It might save some um, pain down the road if we can talk it through the process at this point. The... Student Analytics Club. So I think I mentioned this on our Saturday PD session back in May. Um, we are in discussions with Waterloo AI, so our uh, artificial intelligence, and there is a student um, analytics club that has about 40 students that are largely in engineering and computer science. So we are not at the stage of um, giving every one of us um, a, a student analytics uh, person at this point, very similar to our student manager program, to our SNC program, like we're not established yet and we're, we're growing that, but do you know, there are some students out there. Some have real passion about certain sports. So we've connected them with the coach that they really want to work with. Some are ready to maybe attack some questions that we have, but aren't ready to commit to teams. So if you have some analytics questions or some areas that you think would be beneficial um, you could let me know and I'm the one that's in touch with her with the founder of that program and we'll we'll continue to communicate as it evolves it's really at its infancy but we've had um, three meetings in the last month related to this topic so I would really hope to think in a couple of years from now this is something that uh, our school is starting to be known for but again if you have interest in, in learning more and specific questions reach out to me and we'll see if we can get something rolling the last thing that I had, and then it will open the question, is just the budget document. So I'm just going to share the screen. Um, Lauren, is forgive me to put you on the spot here, but has everyone received a document like this now? We're close, or where are we? There's yeah, there's a handful of teams that haven't. Still, I'm still just working with Trevor to get some apparel stuff populated before we send it out. But I think we're down to like just four teams that need to be sent their version still. Okay, great. So the idea of this document. So if you've received it, you're probably familiar with it. If you haven't had a chance to look at it, that's fine. Uh, it's simply to try to do a better job of communicating what you have to spend. Okay, what you have to start with, and then do a, a pretty, I, I'd say rough, but um, we haven't really had much of a budget document. The, the budget tracking at our end is challenging. Okay, so I guess that's the premise behind it. The system we use is fine, but it is very time consuming for individuals to be regularly checking receipts, but also the 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 unit four, which is our financial system, doesn't get updated until um, items arrive. So if we order apparel for $2,200 in, uh, in in May and they don't arrive till October, well, that $2,500 doesn't show up on our budget until it arrives. So there's, there's some different things that make it challenging. So we thought this document was about as simple as you can get. Um, and all it is, is the operating in green is just going to list the money you have to spend. So you know, I don't know if you can see my cursor fine, but the student athlete fee. So if you charge that, how many athletes you have, how much money's coming in, anticipated profit from camps, how much you're getting from the department. If you're going to run a golf tournament, are you going to run other, some other uh, revenue generation? So you have a good idea of what you have to work with. Then we'll look at where it's going to be spent from. So the main two locations are the operating which, in, which often is where apparel comes from, coach salaries, exhibition, and then the trust or the donation account. 
And in the documents you're receiving, you're getting an updated amount of where your trust sits. So I'm um, just kind of like, if, if there's questions, I'll, I'm happy to answer them, but you will end up receiving the document and it's going to be a shared link that we're going to try this process to stay more on top of budgets and allow you to have a better idea of what you have to spend. Any, I can, I can keep sharing it if there's questions on this document. If you haven't received one yet, you will be. Uh, we're just going to working through getting the numbers. Um, anyone, anyone want to ask questions on the budget document? Okay, so that is what I had on the agenda. Is there anything that anyone um, that wasn't talked that, on that people want to ask about? There was something talked about, Tanya, again, um, and I put it in the chat. Just a quick question on the male allies and the Warrior Strong program. If I can come back to that for a second, how do we know if our athletes have previously done that? I don't think there is a checkbox in Univeris for it, right? Um, and what should we be doing to help or monitor that, so, if any? Mars, do you have audio now? No. Okay, so I I can answer. Mars, you can nod or shake your head and text me if you don't like what I'm saying. So um, it isn't in Univeris. Um, Marshall has managed it. The, where we should be is that anyone who is an athlete last year or previous years would would have been done it um so it's only for our new people so marshall is the one that's doing a lot of the following up with this so basically your new athletes we all will ask you to do is forward the emails from marshall to them to say hey this is something you need to do and then if someone isn't signing up marshall will reach out to you and say i'm having a lot of i'm having trouble getting these two athletes to sign up and do it can you help nudge them but if you don't have those nudging reminders that means your athletes are complying so there's no real responsibility on the coach other than maybe bug someone if marshall reaches out is that marsh that good enough yeah okay so it's it's gone pretty good and there hasn't had uh, well i shouldn't say this marshall has to do some bugging of the athletes i think he's trying to keep it within himself and not go to the coach and it's probably if they come to any of us, let's really help them out because it's probably means he's bugged the athlete 10 times. Yeah. So if you don't know much about it, Tanya, that's actually good news. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I know it went kind of talk quick there, but as always, just reach out to the like Chris, Lauren. Marshall and myself are kind of all IU topics. We talk basically daily. Um, Laura's played a big role in, in the registration with Univeris and all the med forms. So honestly, if you come to any of us on anything, we're, you, you're, you, we'll circle back with each other. So feel free to reach out. Thanks, everyone. Good luck. Great start and take care. Great. Thank you.